Recently, there's been a lot of chatter about the slow or not so slow death of bricks and mortar retail in America. But the truth is a little more complicated than that. Some types of retail, the kind that offer an experience you can't get anywhere else, or products that can't be easily sold online or you need quickly, are doing just fine. So where does that leave a company like Federal Realty, FRT, the Shopping Center Real Estate Investment Trust that owns more than 100 properties in some of the most densely populated areas of the country? We know that the REITs fell out of favor last year as it became clear came clear that the Fed would be raising rates, making the yields of these bond market alternative stocks less attractive. And that's a big reason why Federal Realty stock is down nearly 20% from its peak last summer. However, the company continues to put up solid results, and it yields close to 3%. Still not enough of reason necessarily to own the stock itself because of the way treasuries are, but it begs the question, what do we do with a high-quality, well-managed REIT like this one in the current environment? Let's check in with Don Wood, the president and CEO of Federal Realty, find out more about how his company's doing, where it's headed, Mr. Wood, welcome back to Mid Money. Good to see you, sir. Jim, great have to see you. Have a seat, Thanks for having me, man. Right, Don, I felt that your last conference call was actually, I'm going to use a word that I usually don't associate with you, a little wistful. Wistful? wistful yes, because you basically recognize that you have to do a lot of renovation in order to stay relevant. And it's not like the old days. You can't just put up a shopping center and expect it to work. Jim, there is no doubt that in the United States of America, there's more retail GLA per capita than anywhere in any major country. The country's over-retailed. Yes. The, the country was over-retailed before we started talking about online and anything else like that. So obviously, the country remains over-retailed. Now, that's a big macro point of view. Right. It comes down to specific real estate. And yeah, you absolutely, and what we're trying to do is not look at 2017. We're trying to look at 2020, 2025, make sure that what our product is is the most flexible and relevant for today's retailers, not yesterday. But Don, I got to tell you, you're the only guy doing it. And that's why I'm worried about the other guys. Well, look, the, the, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I think, I okay. think, I think okay. everybody... Well, yeah, I know, you know not read. You know the organization, but I read through, and a lot of people are saying, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I read yours, and when I say wistful, what I say what you're saying is, I'm worried, and that's why I'm fixing it. Look, I am a protect the downside guy. Yes, I'd be the worst CEO been. of Google in the world. <laughs> um, I do protect the downside, and real estate is a long-term business. Retail is, is, is a middle-term business, if you will, but, but the real estate itself is long-term. You start building something today, you just made a 50-year decision. Right. So you better be right. Well, I'll tell you, when I looked at you, you mentioned, you know, A&P, three sports authorities, Hudson Trail, Hancock, these all went. You know, Don... I, I know you list some guys uh, that you, in your, in your presentation, and I'm not going to single any of them out because that's not fair, but I look at them and I say, geez, you know, they all seem like good brands, but maybe they could be in trouble too. The, the, uh, you certainly can't paint a big, wide brush to every retailer, but many management teams in both retailers and in real estate companies across the nation are scratching their heads trying to figure out where we're going to be. Right. It's not easy. Some of them have done a, a really good job at being able to figure out their niche. Right. You know what's a tough spot? The commodity stuff. The, the yes. Not here, not there, just kind of in the middle and existing just to exist. Well, would you ever turn those people down as tenants because you, when you have space? It's not about turning those people down. It, 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 you know, this isn't a period where a rising tide lifts all boats in, in our business, in my view. So, so you certainly need to have product that is attractive and uh, flexible to those tenants who ha are making the, the, the best pitch they can uh, in terms of their relevancy for the next 10 years. I would choose those all day long. But then, when I'm listening to your conference call, I'm hearing about Splunk. I mean, I'm a tech guy, so I know Splunk, but it is remarkable. I'm hearing about mixed use. I'm hearing about residential. Well, and these are all things that you have to do. You spend a lot of money to do it. Fortunately, you borrow at great rates because you're so conservative. But you have to the complexion of these retailers. Of, of course. What but you're doing has changed so much. Splunk is, a, is an office tenant, as, right. you, as you know, uh, for us. And, and the notion of, uh, I, I, I think I'm saying something that, that uh, everyone would agree with, the reason they chose Santana Row where we are is because of the environment that we created. Absolutely. It's not an office building out in the middle of, of suburbia that, that would work for their workforce, for what their workforce demands in terms of services, right. to, what, to what they're looking for, to, you know, over the next 20, 30, 40 years. So the, the creation, the investment today in 2016 and 2017 for the future is what has to happen if you're going to create the relevancy of real estate that, that is, allows you to push rents 
for uh, for years and okay, decades to come. What does happen? We are overstored. This is really that moment, Don, where if you're overstored, you're not. You know, if you're a marginal player, you're not going to make it in the next three years. Jim, this is not brain surgery. It is supply and demand. You're completely right. But all store space is not created equal. Right. And right. so, so you it, it, you got to spend a little bit more time, dig deeper into the real estate locations, dig deeper into the supply demand characteristics of those real estate right. locations, and you got to have two guys fighting for a space. Right. And and right. when you have that, you've got some good stuff. We've got. Most of that, but we've got other stuff that needs to be fixed. But it's interesting that you talk about when things have to be fixed, some of the tenants don't do as well. When well, they're doing some reconstruction. Sure, uh, uh, of course, you know, and remember, retailers are businesses, and, and those businesses have their own business plans trying to figure out what works for them, and not all of them have figured, have figured it out. No, not yet, but I've got to ask you, uh, new president comes in, uh, hate him or like him, I, I'm getting a sense that business is a, a better feel. Are you getting more phone calls? Are there more people who want to expand? I mean, just the tenor. No, not yet. Uh, okay. I would say it this I would say it this way, you know, uh, boy, that election, that election was a surprise to a lot of people. Right. And and it happened in our business during a period of November, December, January. Retailers are doing doing their holiday sales, and in the middle of that, the notion of new real estate and expansion real estate hasn't happened happen yet. Right. So there's a tail. Uh, I'm hopeful, just right. uh, just as as you are, but I'm cautiously. All right. Uh, last hopeful. question. And you say that you need uh, two tenants, but uh, fighting. Uh, do you, in your back of your mind, say, "All right, Amazon's got that guy beat." How much is that in your head? Oh, man. You know, the, the, the notion, first of all, there's a lot of things about Amazon, including the bricks and mortar part of, of Amazon, which is a very interesting dynamic. That you would uh, know better than anyone. Th uh, it's an important dynamic right. uh, there because that is, that is a great holistic company right. trying to, to vertically make sense uh, all the way through the, uh, through the chain. That hardly is, though, the, the only game in town. And you, what you're seeing companies do, some of the ones that are, are particularly progressive, is upping their service level so that it, it, it's not just about price and it's not just, it just about uh, you know, some of those other peripheral things. It's about the quality of lifestyle. Is this working out? for me to go to you and, and go to your bricks and mortar, order online, pick it up at the store, uh, et cetera. That, there are retailers out there that, that are doing that extremely well. Those are the ones I want to court but more than before. In the, even in the times since we've known each other, we know it's your long, it's evolved, but you're evolving with it. And that's yeah, we why are, you gotta. Ready. That's why I keep recommending your stock. That's Don Wood, the President and CEO of Federal Realty Trust. When you ask me, can a retail re make it? A shopping center one? This one can. Mad Money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.